Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert, Sean Stevenson, and I'm so grateful for you tuning in with me today. As you know, we talk about so many different dimensions of health and wellness that are often looked past in our culture today. We know that nutrition matters, exercise matters, absolutely sleep matters, stress management, you know, our relationships, of course, have a big impact on our health. But also, there's some really fascinating research now showing that having meaning and purpose in our lives is a huge contributor to our overall health and wellness and even our lifespan. And funny enough, today more than ever, there's this deficiency that's really happening. And it's a deficiency in a sense of purpose. And so today I really want to dive in and talk about, deconstruct what this actually looks like. What does purpose really mean to help you to really uncover what that is for you? And if you feel like you've already honed in on your purpose, how to fully and authentically step into it. Because, you know, back in time, there there was a time in history when your purpose really was just handed to you. You know, if, you're, if your father was a blacksmith, you're a blacksmith. If your dad was a king, y- you're a prince, all right? If your family was in the farming business, that's just kind of what you rolled into. But times have evolved and people began to decide on their purpose for themselves. And I think a great illustration of that is the movie Sing. Have you seen Sing? It's so good, right? It's an animated movie. But you know, these animated movies have so many dimensions and character development. It's just, it's not just for the kids, you know, but if you haven't seen Sing, definitely check it out. But there's one character who, and so it's basically a singing competition. It's like uh, American Idol, but it's like cartoons. And And the actors that are playing these characters and singers are just phenomenal. But one of the characters is this gorilla because, you know, it's an animated film. So it's like a animal community and he's a gorilla and the family business is Robin Banks. It's robbery. All right. And he's a teenager. He's supposed to be learning to be the getaway driver for his, his dad, who's played by Idris Elba. All right. And the, the son is played by the, this actor, and I hope I'm saying his name right, but it's Taron Egerton, and he's played in Kingsman, and he's playing Elton John coming up, and he just has a phenomenal voice. So uh, he's playing this character, but he doesn't want to be in the family business of crime. I want to sing, Dad. I want to sing. And so throughout history, we would just fall into what the family business looks like, but then we start to have this society where we can begin to choose. Now today, more than ever, we live in a society where everything is really ripe for the taking. Most of us get to choose what it is that we want to do. We get to quote, figure out what it is that we want to do. And that can be some serious like mental punishment. You know, it's just like here, you go figure it out, figure out what you want to do in this world. And today we have this phenomenon is something called the paradox of choice. And it's a wonderful book by uh, Barry Schwartz you could check out, but just speaks to the fact that humans, we like to have choice. We like to have the idea of freedom, but when we have too much choice, it can be debilitating for us. And this can add to that kind of uh, ingredients that's baking up this lack of purpose cake that a lot of us are making. And so today I really want to dive in and and again, deconstruct what it looks like to really uncover our purpose and step fully and completely into this. Because the reality is that some of us have this very romantic idea that our purpose will be presented to us in this magical moment. Something's going to happen. It's just like the clouds are going to part. Music's going to be playing in the background and we're going to figure out, boom, that's it. That's what I'm here to do. And I'm just here to tell you today that it doesn't really work like that. But there are some incredible magical moments and there are so many different things that are intertwined when you experience that deep seated feeling of stepping into your purpose. And we're gonna go through that today. And I think at the end of this, you are going to feel much more connected and compelled and empowered in your life. And with that said, again, today, we're gonna talk about uncovering your purpose, And if you feel you've already honed in on what that is, how to really fully and completely step into that. Now, some of us get up each day on our purpose and we sip a little cup of joe. We have a little cup of that black bean juice, or you can call it coffee. I think coffee is a much more attractive name. And for years, I didn't touch it. 
and I've shared this before, but I had a really traumatic experience as a child. I saw my grandma and my grandpa drinking coffee every day, and it just looked like they were having such a good time. Like, it's just what is going on here. So I decided I'm going to take a sip of grandma's coffee. Took a sip, and I thought something was wrong with my grandparents. I thought that they there was something off with their medulla oblongata. I didn't know what was going on. Why would they think this is okay to drink? It was nasty. All right, Folgers in your cup. And I hadn't drank any since then until about two years ago when my wife kept raving about the Four Sigmatic coffee. You know, I was doing the elixirs and she just kept every day. She just was so pumped to have her coffee. And I'm going to make a confession today that I haven't shared before, but she basically refers to me as her barista. All right. I got to get in there and make that coffee every day for her. Right? I'm her little, I call, I say it, I'm garçon. All right. So even when I present the coffee to her, like I have my head down, it's garçon. And I give her a coffee each morning. She looks forward to it. Now I do too. And I really get it now. Coffee isn't just coffee and the potential benefits there. It's an experience. It really is an experience. And one of the reasons that a lot of us turn to coffee, and check this out, because I don't think a lot of us know factually why, but there's some really cool data affirming some of these benefits. So let's talk about on that energy front and really getting out and getting after our purpose and living our lives and also having that energy and even influencing our body composition through the use of high quality sources of caffeine. Check this out. So this was a study that looked at the fascinating fact that caffeine can increase your metabolic rate by approximately three to upwards of 11% boost in your metabolic rate, how your body is burning calories. This study was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition and found that most of the increase that caffeine spurs about with our metabolism is caused by an increase in the burning of fat. It's actually burning fat. Really, really cool. Now, this is where we have to really have some uh, judicious approach in using caffeine because there are good sources of caffeine and then there's not so good sources that come along with a little or sometimes even a lot of negative side effects. So we want to go for high quality organic sources of coffee, specifically since we're talking about coffee, because insecticides, pesticides, fungicides, Those are either neurogenic or estrogenic. So they're literally potentially having an influence on your nervous system and even your endocrine system. And it's just not cool. So obviously organic is important, but I'm here to also inform you that we don't want to double, triple, quadruple down on just knocking down coffee. We can utilize something that has more of a synergistic blend to it because coffee does in fact stimulate your nervous system which is okay. And also some stress hormones are related to that, namely adrenaline. But we also can fall into this place where we're just pushing that button down way too hard, way too much and causing issues with everything ranging from from our sleep to our energy levels and having that kind of correlated crash of energy that so many people see when they're out there guzzling conventional, even sometimes high quality coffee. And so I love this blend because of this. Listen to this. There was a study that was published in Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise, and it looked at 30 healthy test subjects for six weeks to record the effects of cordyceps mushroom had on their performance. The group that added cordyceps to their daily regimen had twice the oxygen intake of the control group who didn't get the cordyceps. Oxygen is essential because this is delivering nutrients to your muscles, preventing fatigue, also preventing the buildup of lactic acid, helping you to go another further, all right, going even further. Also, the study revealed that the same group showed an overall 9% increase in their aerobic activity from taking cordyceps. So why am I talking about cordyceps and coffee? Because those two things come together in Four Sigmatic medicinal mushroom blends. Their cordyceps coffee is one of my favorite things in the world. And I rotate that with the lion's mane coffee, but it's just something I really look forward to. And so many people have shared their stories with me that they really love the energy that they experience, but then they don't have that weird associated crash. It's just like this consistent natural energy because it really is operating on your body's natural energy systems, 
rather than just hyper stimulating your system to keep going, going, going. So obviously I'm a huge fan. I highly, highly recommend you check out their Cordyceps coffee and also their Lion's Mane coffee if it's more like mental work that you're going to be doing and just their other formulas as well. If you're not a fan of coffee, they have um, mushroom hot cocoa mixes. Ooh. They also have their general elixirs, which you can get Cordyceps by itself or Lion's Mane, Chaga, and just pop over there, check them out. It's foursigmatic.com forward slash model. And you get 15% off everything. 15% off everything they carry. This is exclusive with the Model Health Show. So go to F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com forward slash model for 15% off and get hooked up. All right. So on that note, let's jump into the Apple Podcast Review of the Week. Another five-star review by The Trendy Voyager. Hi, Sean. This review is long overdue, but I wanted to let you know that you changed my life. I'm The Trendy Voyager on Instagram. A few days ago, I had posted your podcast on my story to share your amazing show with others. A simple direct message from you came at such a good time. You told me, I hope you know how amazing and powerful you are. This message came at such an important moment in my life, having been recently laid off and looking for work. That was the message I needed to keep me going. Thank you for all you do, Sean. Your podcast has truly changed my life and has helped me get through the toughest days over the last few years. Awesome. I appreciate that so much. Thank you for leaving that review over on Apple Podcasts. If you've yet to leave a review, please pop over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review for the show. Let everybody know what you think about the show. And I appreciate that so, so very much. And on that note, let's get to our topic of the day. Today, we're talking about how to diversify your mental inputs and to step into your purpose. And this was really encouraged and inspired by my recent keynote that I did at the biohacking conference this year. And in this keynote, I shared the importance of diversifying our exercise, diversifying our approach to recovery, and also the essential need to diversify our thinking. And I think that it really struck a chord with a lot of people and they were really inspired and compelled to make some big changes and shifts in their lives. And today I'm going to share with you some of what I covered in that final section of that talk because diversifying our thinking is an absolute key to uncovering and walking in your purpose. So in past episodes of the Model Health Show, we've talked about research regarding mirror neurons and the synchronization of human brain waves. So these are a couple of things that we talked about. One of these uh, episodes was an interview with Dr. Daniel Goleman, who wrote the book Emotional Intelligence and also Social Intelligence. And he's probably the number one person who who really impressed and put emotional intelligence into public lexicon and the same thing with mirror neurons. But the theory surrounding these mirror neurons that inhabit our bodies are that they gather data from our environment, right? So we have neurons, we have cells in our bodies that model and simulate what's happening in our environment. So what we're exposed to, these cells kind of simulate us being a part of it or doing it. And for example, if you are watching someone on television, there are cells that you have that are kind of simulating you being a part of it or simulating you doing the thing that you're witnessing. And that's the best description that we have. And there's still a lot more data to be done regarding these mirror neurons. But the bottom line is this is one of the major ways that we come to learn our culture and learn language and how to speak. We're not often just kind of encouraging uh, kids to talk, they're just picking it up from the environment. They're simulating the, the, the lip movements and the, and the sounds that they're picking up by reading their environment. And these cells are simulating these programs all the time, which is super, super powerful stuff. And this can really start to explain why we as humans inherently have so much empathy for other people, right? We see certain situations happen and we really have this experience, a very visceral experience of feeling remorse or sadness or pain or joy. You know, you see one of those proposal videos on social media and you just feel happiness and, 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 and joy for that person, or you see something sad, a sad story, you know, with a tragedy taking place and we viscerally feel it, even though it wasn't us, 
we still feel it. And this is inherent in our human connection, but empathy, like so many other things, can be trained out of us. But it's something that we naturally do. You know, again, just like anything, it can be kind of trained out of us and forced out of us, but we have a natural, innate connection with other people. And these mirror neurons are big part of this equation. And again, so much more is going to be coming forward about how this stuff works. Super fascinating stuff. And just, again, keep in mind that what we witness and see with other people, what they're experiencing, we feel for them. And it's through these pathways of these mirror neurons is a big reason for that. So that's part one. Another part is research coming out of Princeton University that has affirmed that the human brain actually, quote, syncs up with other people's brains when we're in conversation. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see the image of the two brains that are literally matching each other. And it's starting to become like a coordinated dance. And this is just two people, the, the test subjects, who don't know each other, just creating some initial rapport. And you can see the brain waves will literally start to sync up and, and match and, quote, mirror each other. And so we do this automatically. All the time this is happening, we're syncing up brains with the people that we're in conversation and connection with. And if you're interested in personal growth and, and good mental health, the first reaction when hearing this information, which was my reaction, is I need to be careful who I'm talking to. I need to stand guard to the door of my mind, you know, and not get to... Uh, unconsciously or haphazardly getting into conversations with people who are going to bring my brain some drama and simulate some drama programs. So this is something we might do and kind of latch on to that and become hyper guarded. But what I'm here to do today and to share with you is that if we become too guarded, then we can miss out on some of the most valuable growth of all in our lives. And it's not that you need to purposely go out and get yourself in negative environments and surround yourself with negative people, but our tendency, our natural tendency is to surround ourselves with like-minded people. And this is wonderful because it helps to affirm things, to keep us in a good space. But there's also, there's another side to that story. And this is the fact that if we are only proactively putting ourselves in environments around like-minded people, this can actually block our growth. And in some instances, this can even become dangerous because if we're around the same people having the same conversations, we can easily become stuck in a certain way of thinking if you, if you really kind of just start to analyze this stuff. Let's take the nutrition domain, for example. Let's use keto specifically. And I'm, I'm a fan of keto. It's something that I've employed uh, for patients over the years that I've utilized in my own life. But it's just, it's one tool that's in my superhero utility belt, in your superhero utility belt. And it's an incredibly valuable framework. And being part of a keto community will further support your lifestyle and your goals. But if all you did was spend time talking to other keto folks when discussing nutrition, your conversations will become very linear. You will develop tunnel vision, right? And we'll start to miss things on the periphery that could be beneficial for us and even just help with our understanding and diversify our communication. If we wanna be really great at communicating the benefits of keto to another person, we might wanna know about the benefits of the other approaches that they might be taking on. But we can miss that if we're not proactively getting ourselves in other conversations. So I hope that makes sense. A good example and somebody who can be considered even like the poster child slash guy slash elderly fellow would be Mark Sisson, which giving that label of an elderly fellow, he's been here for some decades, I believe he's in his 60s, but he's really changing the game and the paradigm on what that really looks like. And his goal is to show what's possible for people in their 60s, 70s, 80s. His physique and his functionality, his mental capacity is like that of somebody who is decades younger. Literally, he's out there competing and, and, and whipping, <laughs> whipping on 20 year olds regularly in performance and he's just such a great example but being that he's somebody who's authored books on keto and been, been one of the biggest proponents you might get in your feelings if you're out and you see him at a restaurant and he's like putting some some olive oil on some bread you might run over and dive and try to knock the bread as it's going towards his mouth no, and try and stop him but he's gonna be like hey hey, hey relax keto is amazing 
but he's experienced enough to know that we need to be open and listen and learning from other camps. And he's the first to tell you that he's, he's about flexible keto, right? And being metabolically adapted and metabolically flexible and utilizing some of the wonderful things that we have access to in our lives. So it's diversifying our approach, diversifying our conversations, because it's super easy to dismiss someone, anyone who doesn't believe what you believe. All right, think about that for a minute. It's super easy to dismiss someone who doesn't believe what you believe. But if it's getting results for them, who are you to say that it's wrong? It's not our place. And so what we can really learn from is we can learn through people's winning. We can learn through what is working for people. And even if it's a different approach, we can still learn through that. But we can also learn through their mistakes, right? And if we're not getting that diversity in conversation, we're going to miss on winning in different forms and also mistakes in different forms because success leaves clues. I remember Jim Rohn saying that it changed my life. Success leaves clues, but failure leaves clues as well. Right? Failure leaves clues as well. And when I think about failure, failure leaving clues, I think about this old ad with this cookie that was walking around. So it's like a, it's an animated cookie. It's walking around and it's leaving little chocolate chips behind it as it's walking. There's a trail of chocolate chips as the cookie's walking. And if you look at the ad, you're immediately like, that's poop. This cookie is leaving little clues and droplets of poop. Who, who, did somebody get fired? Like, why would you think this is okay? But it was chocolate chips, right? So it's kind of funny. But that's what I think about when I think about failure leaving clues, all right? It's leaving little chocolate chips that look like poo. So with that said, in tying this all together and diversifying our thinking for definitely getting ourselves around like-minded people and really affirming and, and, and cultivating that positivity and support, but also not being afraid to engage in different environments and different conversations because this is step one in identifying and walking in your purpose is fostering ideas, ideas. Ideas truly are one of the most powerful things in the universe and exposure to new ideas. This is key to really uncovering what our purpose is. When we're a kid, I, we have so many magnificent ideas. Everything is possible. We can be anything, we can do anything. My son Braden recently, I mean, for him, he's, he's gonna be a ninja, like, you can't go to like uh, a job search, like nin hiring ninjas, right? You're not going to find this out there. But for him, this is a possibility. But the beautiful thing is this could manifest in different ways. He could end up being a ninja in a movie. He could be uh, a martial arts instructor. You know, he could uh, design costumes for, you know, have the, the, the number one costume design for ninja gear in the world, whatever. It can take on different forms, but we can be the president of a company or we can be the president of a country like everything is possible these ideas and so something happens though along the way society starts to kind of stamp on these ideas and let us know in subtle and sometimes aggressive ways that these things aren't possible for us and so today i want to encourage you to take your power back and to begin to let your ideas really express themselves and to thrive and to manifest themselves again. And I want you to start to become an, an idea machine. And James Altucher, who's been a guest on the show, talks about becoming an idea machine. There's a strategy for that. Every day he wakes up and he writes down 10 ideas. It's 10 ideas, any and every kind of random thing that he can think of. This could be, you know, an idea for a new app. It could be an idea for a new... Uh, a way to do a morning routine. It could be an idea for someone else that they can execute on in their business. And the list goes on and on. An idea for a new, pro a physical product. Maybe it's an idea for some kind of a double-handled kettlebell or something like that, or a toilet seat warmer. You know, it's just different stuff, but just writing down ideas. And what he says, a lot of the ideas are just, you know, they're, they're crazy. They're nonsense, but they matter. They're exercising that idea muscle. And some ideas in there are gold that have made him millions of dollars, all right? So really starting to grow and develop your idea muscle is part and parcel to uncovering your 
purpose. And so that's one side. Also, we need exposure. And this is really what I presented in that talk at the biohacking conference, because we talk about diversification in our finances and money and investments. We talk about diversification in our food and nutrients. We know the importance of that, but we also need diversification in our thinking and in our mental inputs. Because again, this will enable you to prevent stagnation and linear thinking and tunnel vision and, and helping you to avoid this easily trapped way of being. And it will add unique dimensions to what you do that no one else has. When you are diversifying your mental inputs, even if you are a personal trainer, you will be so much different than any other person doing it because you have this really unique tapestry of mental inputs that are automatically expressed through you. And I liken how we really are to like Rogue in X-Men. I don't know if you've ever checked out the comics or the movie or the, the cartoon even, but she absorbed people's powers. If she touched them, she absorbed their powers. And this is what we're always doing all the time. By being around people, we are absorbing their, their ideas. We're absorbing their energy. And it's becoming a part of us. When we hear somebody else's ideas coming in, some of their statements, some of their language, we absorb it. But the cool thing is we don't, when Rogue does it, they like pass out, all right? When we do that, other people are still good. And in fact, they're doing better because there's a statement that when you teach something, you get to learn it twice. So when you have somebody teaching you something, they're becoming better and more versed in understanding that thing themselves, and you're able to absorb that power. All right, so now, how do we do this? Because the Model Health Show, we would like to bring some practicality to it and some action steps. So how do we go about diversifying our mental inputs and our thinking? And so here's my challenge for you, all right? And this is going to help tremendously with becoming an idea machine and fostering the idea that will help to uncover your purpose and or help you to firmly, powerfully step into that purpose. And this is my challenge for you. At least once a month, go and try something that you normally wouldn't do. Something that people who know you socially would be surprised to know that you did. All right. Good example. Recent Phenomenal Life event in Jamaica. There was a, a day where we went, went on an excursion together. You know, the attendees and also the speakers. And we, the excursion was to climb a waterfall. What? You can do that? I, I couldn't rationally see in my mind, like, how is that even possible? And we get to the place and sure enough, it's like these different levels of rocks and, 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 and this multi-level waterfall that you can climb. And my mother-in-law, who is just my greatest teacher in this space of like, you know, personal development and, and even nutrition, she really sparked the beginning of some huge insights and transformation for me. She was looking at the situation like, uh, I didn't sign up for this. This is not who I am. And sure enough, she's standing around. The guide is telling us, okay, so we're going to do this. We're going to go up together. You know, make sure you step on these rocks and not those rocks because you could fall and bust it. Right. And he immediately grabs her hand and says, you're leading us today. And she shared that in her mind, she was like, no, I'm not. You've got the wrong person. I didn't come here for this right? But she did something that was out of her character and she did it, right? She did something that people who know her would be surprised to hear that she did, right? Even though she is a leader in other dimensions, her being a leader, taking us up a waterfall, different story, right? So put yourself in some unique situations like that. For me, uh, I went on a recent date with my wife. We went to the art museum here in St. Louis. I don't know about art. I know about the human body, you know, I think that's art and that's beauty and fascinating. I don't get it with abstract, you know, orange blots and purple. I don't understand. All right. Some, of course, like there's magnificent art pieces that are like these beautiful murals and, you know, uh, paintings that look like somebody took a picture. You know, there's really cool. But for me, I'm, I'm blown away. I just saw an elephant hold a paintbrush with his trunk and paint an elephant. That is fascinating for me, all right? Seeing an elephant paint an elephant, psh, 
It was like Inception. It was incredible. But just going to the art museum, not my typical thing. But I did it. And people who know me, even if you, you know, you know me, um, you would think like, nah, I don't, I don't, I'll be surprised like he's hanging out at an art museum or something like that. But I did that and I got that experience in those new inputs and I was very inspired and I definitely want to go back and do that again. But I did something unexpected and it was fun. We had a good time, got to connect with my wife, you know, and it was awesome. So I encourage you to do that at least once a month, go and try something, do something that you normally wouldn't do. All right. So that's number one. Number two way to diversify your thinking is to begin to diversify your media, diversify the entertainment that you're taking in. And this can be incredibly powerful. And so let's start with uh, the, the books and magazines that you're reading. For many years, when I got into this field and I was just on fire, I wanted to read and learn about everything I could about nutrition, about human health, about psychology, about everything that helps to create a truly sovereign, healthy human being. And I started to really believe that reading fiction was just not productive. It's just not productive. Why would I do that? And the funny thing is that reading fiction is what got me so excited about reading books, period. Because I went from college to like, you gotta read, which when you are forced to read, it's, it's generally not as fun, right? But after graduating, even my wife, she was like, uh, yeah, I'm never gonna read again. And for us, we picked up some, you know, the Da Vinci Code started it all, all right? The Da Vinci Code. Wow, such a great book, had us just enthralled. And we read it together as a couple and she couldn't wait, you know, to, to talk about it with me if I didn't get to the part yet. And so it was really, really cool. And, and by the way, just a little sidebar, The Da Vinci Code, you know, a lot of people will say for so many different things, you know, they see the movie and there's a book and they're like, well, the book is so much better. Which Sometimes it's just, that's just, it's just like letting people know that you read the book. <laughs> But sometimes it's true. And in the case of The Da Vinci Code, the movie was just sm a smoking like droplet of chocolate chip. All right. But the book was phenomenal. And that led me into interest in just reading other things. And I started to, you know, kind of dive in and read more nutrition books because I was like attending things and like absorbing the information that way. I just became a really just ferocious reader. And... But again, fiction became unproductive in my mind. And so I want to help to create a, a new place of thinking. If this is something that sounds familiar to you, reading more fiction can actually increase your emotional intelligence. And there's a study, and this was conducted at York University and the University of Toronto. And the uh, lead researcher said, quote, individuals who often read fiction appear to be better able to understand other people, to empathize with them and view the world from their perspective, end quote. And they also stated that this effect is probably because novels and short stories get inside the heads of multiple characters and helping to explain their motives and their objectives. And it's really like being able to look at things from an omniscient viewpoint, right? From a meta perspective and seeing all of these different emotions and, and driving forces in different characters. Reading fiction helps us to do that. It translates to better relationships in our real lives, potentially, you know, by taking advantage of this. And so this is just something that I've incorporated more often. I don't read a lot of fiction, but I've incorporated more often and I definitely see the translation and benefits for sure. And if you're somebody who already reads fiction, let's pivot and maybe try some, reading something that you normally wouldn't read. Like if you're totally into like the, the, the Da Vinci Code and like Dan Brown or Jack Reacher type of things, maybe check out Fifty Shades of Grey. Who knows? Like just jump into something new. It might be a bit much. It might be a bit much. But just diversify those mental inputs because they are going to add layers to your understanding and your character. All right. Also, different types of music. This is another way to diversify our media. And I truly do believe that music, and I know you, you know this as well, like you hear certain songs and it literally just instantly brings you back to a certain time in your life. Music really is a soundtrack of our lives. And I know you know songs from like 30, 20, 10 years ago 
you haven't even heard and you still know those words. You haven't heard in years and you know the lyrics. It's incredibly powerful input and they get, the, there's something about the melody and the music that drives these things deeper into our psyche. And so being diverse in your musical choice really helps to create diversity in your thinking. You know, there's that statement that uh, neurons that fire together, wire together. And so having these experiences of different musics really helps our brain to make different connections and to connect in more creative and interesting ways even. And so for me, when somebody sees me or they, you know, they hear me speak, they're probably like, you know what? Yeah, that guy, he definitely listens probably to like some some smooth R&B, right? Sean is sensual AF. He just is, right? You might think that. But the reality is, yes, I do enjoy uh, a dabble in that and, you know, uh, hip hop. But I also, I love country music. I was just, my whole morning was just country music today. And people would be surprised to hear that. You know, I've shared it before, but I, it was a big part of my uh, childhood, with my grandmother and driving to the country, you know, they lived there's a straight dirt road and, you know, fishing and hunting and all those things as a little kid in those long three and a half hour car rides, just listening to Kenny Rogers and Randy Travis and Dolly Parton and Reba McIntyre. Fancy, don't let me down. All right. Shout out to Reba McIntyre. All right. And even today, some of the music, but then you start to see today is so interesting that there's such a big crossover effect happening. You could see so many different um, aspects of hip hop in country music now. And recently there's this huge collaboration took place with this new artist. And is uh, I think his name is Little Nas X. Number one song, Old Town Road. Country vibe to it. Got Billy Ray Cyrus on the remix. First of all, have you ever heard of a remix of a country song? Okay, this is huge. He got a legend on that track. You know, he's got, it's got that hip hop vibe to it. And it's like this, but this is, it, when I heard that song, it's like, that's, that's me. That's my life. I'm a blend of those things. Funny enough, really took off in popularity. So it's having this really interesting opportunity to take in some different things. Don't be so pigeonholed in like what you think is like, this is the only type of music I, I like. Allow yourself to taste and touch different, different things. Because also, so I listen to country music. I love uh, certain classical music. I love s s soundtracks, like the Lord of the Rings soundtrack. I play that bad boy all the time. I, I don't know why. I it's, just, it's just a vibe. It's just a vibe. So give yourself some different inputs through that medium as well. Also, same thing in the show's movies, those kind of things, those inputs. Don't just be in that one lane that you tend to be in, right? Diversify yourself. Watch some things and, and incorporate some things that you normally wouldn't. Uh, the other day on the flight, uh, you know, they got like, it's like Creed 2 on there. So somebody see me, they might be like, he's going to watch Creed 2, like scanning the movie options. I chose A Star is Born, Lady Gaga, Bradley Cooper. And first of all, if you haven't seen it, I don't want to spoil it for you, but there's that framework of a certain type of movie that's boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl back. I didn't know what happened like that. I was all in my feelings like for two days after watching that movie. Oh my goodness. It's a really, really great movie. Uh, but I, I haven't really vibed with Lady Gaga before. Uh, I remember when I first heard about her, I had a client who... You know, uh, this is when I was doing a lot of client work. And sometimes I have these VIP folks and, you know, they fly me out and I, you know, do like a immersion with them. And she said that I was the Lady Gaga of health and wellness. This was like 10 years ago. And I was like, what? In my mind, I'm like, is that a comp? I guess that's a compliment. But then she was like, no, no, you don't understand. She is, she is this incredibly talented performer, but she's a classical trained pianist as well. And she's become a world-class uh, songwriter and uh, motivator and community builder. And so like when she started to tell me all those things, I was like, wow, I am Lady Gaga. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, t I'm not Lady Gaga. 
I still the 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 connection, nah, not so much, but I thought it was a great compliment once she told me those other parts. But if you haven't seen the movie, check it out. And again, uh, I, just the other day, I was wrapping up my my lunch and I decided to watch Keanu Reeves talk about his motorcycles. I don't know a thing about motorcycles, not a thing. And yet I watched it just like, I'm going to let me partake in this sample of this little morsel of, you know, same thing. We do this with food. Like we try different cuisines and I gave myself that mental input and it was really inspiring. It was inspiring to see somebody who cared so much about what he's doing, you know, because he's become a part of a motorcycle company and to hear some of his story and the connection to the different motorcycles and, you know, to think about, he showed a concept vehicle to, to hear what they're thinking about the future, man, all these things are relevant in our lives in different ways. All of those things I just talked about, those different aspects are relevant. And so to see that in different fields is incredibly valuable. All right, so again, proactively taking in different media can help us to diversify our thinking, whether it's through the books we read, the music we listen to, the shows that we watch, uh, you know, movies, things like that. Proactively, Try some different stuff out, right? Taste some different things because you might find something that you really like, but most importantly, that's re it really helps to diversify your language, right? And, and the, the mosaic of who you are as a human being, all right? So on top of that and diversifying our thinking is also to talk with different types of people. This is so important. Talk with people from different cultures. This is one of the greatest gifts that we have today that we heretofore did not have the opportunity to do this because we were so isolated in our tribes. Today we have infinite connection and it's really, we tend to just jump in again, just jump into our little circles when we can have access and communicate and learn from people of so many different cultures, so many different driving forces and motives and experiences. And so we need to do this because today, like seriously, we are a world family. We are not like this idea of isolation and separation and countries and borders and all these things. We just made this stuff up. Real talk. We just made up the line. All those lines you see separating states and countries. We made them up. We're one race. We're one humanity here together collectively. And life is is, is, is working to express itself through all of us. And it's really powerful when we start to retrain our thinking and becoming more connected. Of course, we can have uh, patriotism and, and, and joy of where we come from and you know our cities and our teams and things like that. It, it creates for some great fun and competition. But to think that the other people and places don't have immense value and purpose themselves and a desire and drive to be healthy and happy, that separates us. So getting involved and talking with people from different cultures and, and learning, you know, what are their driving forces and their motivation. This is one of the great gifts that I've had access to by spending some years working at a university uh, when I was a strength and conditioning coach. And I got to meet people every day from different countries. And many of them I worked with and you would hear the same things. Everybody just wants to be happy. They want to have good relationships. They want to be healthy and feel good. They want to have fun. They want to have meaningful, purposeful work and to enjoy and express themselves and to, and to have fun. I might have said fun twice because everybody wants to have the funds. All right. So, but we, we don't know that if we isolate ourselves and it's this them and us. And the reality is we're really all connected. If we get into this, we start talking about like the string theory, you know, some other kind of weird stuff with like quantum mechanics. We are connected. And we've done some shows talk, talking a little bit about that with um, uh, Mark Gober. So we'll put that in the show notes for you if you really want to have your mind blown and how we are really connected. But proactively to diversify your thinking, diversify who you are, your lifeline, your value proactively talk to and get connected and experience other people in other cultures. All right, so you have to keep these fresh inputs coming in, fresh perspectives, not just more of the same, all right? Diversify your thinking, and it's going to help you to unlock your potential and to help you to fully step into your potential and your purpose 
in a way that no one can ever replicate. And this really just for me helps me to think about the diversity that I see in a certain brand that I absolutely love. For many years, I've been just a huge fan of, and it's due to the CEO, the person who created the company in the first place. And some of the things he was into was like MMA and nutrition and unconventional training tools like clubs, steel clubs and steel maces and freaking swords, like all this stuff. And also personal development and really working on becoming the best possible human and leader and friend that he can possibly be. And I'm talking about Aubrey Marcus, who's been on the show uh, and he's just a really good friend of mine. And he's the CEO of Onnit, O-N-N-I-T. And this company is just literally exploded and has taken off to new dimensions. And you see so many different people out there. I mean, we're talking about millions of customers and people who are taking uh, advantage of all their incredible resources. But also you see this in these huge communities like mixed martial arts, so much so that not only are many of these um, top professional fighters a part of the Onnit team, but also they, at the Onnit headquarters in Austin, they created an, an MMA training facility there. What? That's a serious dedication to something that you love. This is a nutrition like manufacturing place. And they readjusted and changed their, uh, their facility to bring that part in. And it's super inspiring to see. And they've got the cold crowd therapy there. They've got, if you're in Austin, pop by, check them out. Go to On It. All right, the gym is just dope. It's just fun. Always cool people there. Big shout out to everybody down there. A primal soldier. All right, Eric, big shout out to him. So many cool people. But bottom line is this. This came from the, the diversity and the experience of Aubrey Marcus. And I highly encourage you to check out On It. And I love their MCT oil. Whenever I talk about my coffee, Please know the MCT oil is in it. Always. Like every time I get, <laughs> I'm upset. That's a Drake song. When I don't have my MCT oil and I travel and I, and I happen to forget it. It's only been like two times it's happened, but I want to make sure that I have my MCT oil because of the thermogenic effects. Number one, and this is all like we've got clinical evidence for this. Also the benefits for supporting your friendly uh, gut flora and potentially getting rid of, uh, pathogenic bacteria, and also the energy translation in your body because the MCTs, the medium chain triglycerides, are in a form that can actually go directly through your cell wall to provide energy for the cell, all right? There's, you, there's nothing else in conventional food that you can name that has that same capability. So I use the emulsified MCT oil. Let me be clear. There's the you know standard kind of uh, clear MCT oil. That's cool. I love the emulsified MCT oil because it's like a coffee creamer. The, the texture, the consistency, super easy to blend and mix together. And I love the almond milk latte flavor. My wife loves the vanilla. I love the strawberry and some different stuff as well. Definitely check them out. It's onnit.com forward slash model. It's O-N-N-I-T dot com forward slash model. 10% off. You get 10% off everything. Their nutrition, uh, supplements, foods, Oh man, have you tried their uh, fat butters yet? You got to look at their fat butters, all right? Ooh, so good. And also their fitness equipment. So The Rock, right? Dwayne The Rock Johnson, he's using the Onnit kettlebells, right? They got the Primal Bells. They've got uh, Marvel-inspired uh, uh, battle ropes and kettlebells as well. The Iron Man kettlebell is just dope. All right, so many cool things, steel maces and clubs. They are the company that put that stuff on the map. Check them out. 10% off everything that they carry. All right, onnit.com forward slash model. All right, so we covered number one on these, and it's really three steps to uncovering our purpose and or fully stepping into our purpose authentically and powerfully. Number one was ideas and the generation and diversity of ideas and exposure and being able and giving ourselves permission to express those ideas. That's number one. All right. So with ideas, that's great, but idea cannot manifest in purpose in and of itself. We also need this second component, which is passion. Now, first of all, um, when it, we talk about living your purpose, 
the word passion in and of itself can be misconstrued, right? A lot of us are thinking like, I just need to, I don't know what I'm passionate about. You know, you see somebody who's really, you know, uh, in their purpose and you see the passion they have and the work ethic and all the stuff they're doing. But nine times out of 10, it's not like what you see, especially out there on social media. You know, there are great individuals who are out there inspiring people like Gary V, right? Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, you might see him on social media and see some of his talks and you just see this incredible, he's just dripping passion. It's dripping off, right? He's got just very passionate, bouncing around kind of character and approach to things. But the reality is this, even if he wasn't doing this for Vayner Media and this entrepreneurship brand and, and investing and all the things that he's a big proponent of and, and giving content for helping entrepreneurs, if it was put Gary Vee in selling John Deere tractors or selling cupcakes or selling clothes, sell, you know, selling the swagoo, he's still probably going to have that same demeanor as somebody who is seemingly like bouncing around and, and, and excited about everything, right? But that's just the person's character. You don't have to be overly excited about something to be passionate about it. So sometimes we see that and we think, I don't, I don't have that. I don't feel like he does about that. And we think we don't have passion. And it's a huge, huge misconception and mistake to think that way. Because passion is not about being overly excited and having something like biting you on the butt to get you out of the bed in the morning and throwing you in the shower and just like pulling you to this vision. It's not like that. It's not like that. 99% of the time, passion, let me tell you what it is. Passion is more like real love. Passion is more like real love. Not in love, okay, because there's a difference. There's a difference between being in love and real love, all right? Being in love with something is having that kind of, you know, um, constantly infatuated and wanting to be with this, this, this something and work on it. But that initial phase fades away 100% of the time at some point. So passion is really more like real love, which when you're in love, it feels like you're not in control, right? This love has just kind of captured you. Real love is intentional. You choose it. I choose to do work in this relationship. I choose to be a part of this and to grow in this, to develop this. Even when things are not fun, even when things are not uh, this happy vibe or there's struggle or there's pain or there's confusion, I choose to be in this. I choose to work on this and I choose to love you. It's not unconscious. It's not something I'm not in control of. I choose to love you. This is what passion really is. Because when we're working in our purpose, things are not always going to be rosy posy, sunshine, you know, everything's going to be going your way. Absolutely not. And some of the greatest, most successful, most fulfilled people will tell you that. They have many stories of trials and tribulations and things that they've gone through in working in their purpose. And so if we have a connection to something that we know that we would do no matter what, even if uh, there was not money attached to it, even if it was something that would require a lot of our time and energy and focus, we'd still want to do it then you're kind of starting to, to, to hear the whispers of what that purpose and passion really looks like. And also, um, I think it's important to share this, that the word passion itself is derived from a Greek word meaning to suffer. Right? The word passion is derived from a Greek word meaning to suffer. And it would automatically be kind of strange because it's just like, I thought passion was about something that was good and inspiring. But our passions can also take us through some really uh, turbulent and, and dark places sometimes in trying to figure out how to uh, live with this passion because it's generally pretty unique to us in some form or fashion. And how can I live this passion and keep this as a part of my life? It, there's suffering involved, you know, but I'm a, I'm a huge uh, advocate of language right? And so suffering for me is optional, right? We don't have to necessarily tie passion to suffering, but just difficult times, going through stuff, needing to work on figuring stuff out and getting good at something, 
right? Getting good at something, investing in something. Because for some, some people, they've been working in a certain field and their passion uh, is just driving them through and they put in these 10,000 hours and they're world class at this thing and they just enjoy what they're doing, you know? But it doesn't have to be this picture of what somebody else's passion looks like. So you don't want to compare your story to somebody else's story when it comes to passion, All right? So I hope that makes sense. And this part was really uh, brought to me today by my son, Brayden. And he came over to me um, last night, actually. And he sat down next to me and he asked me, hey, dad, when did you start speaking on stages? And I thought that was like really interesting that he asked me that. And he's been there. He's been at many of the events that I've spoken at over the years, even since he was a little baby. And sometimes I even involve him you know, at some of these events. And so it's something that he's been exposed to and it's created this tapestry for him, this, um, a layer of, of his thinking that this is something that you do and that it is possible. And he asked me, when did you start or how did you start speaking on stages? How did you start? How did you start? Which is a very powerful question because asking what are the steps that made that a thing for you? And I've literally spoken in front of thousands at different events and it's been an incredible experience and it's something I really enjoy doing, of course. And make sure next time an event, come and hang out with me. All right, we have the most amazing time. All right, definitely come to the next event. And I've got something really cool coming up here soon. So I'll let you know about that. So be ready. But the first time, and I shared it with him, I said, you know what? No one gives you permission to do the things that you want to do in life. Nobody tapped me on my shoulder and said, hey, you're going to speak. Hey, you're going to create a number one podcast. Go do it. Nobody gave me permission to do any of this stuff. And that the same thing in our lives. Nobody's giving you permission. You choose. And so I was inspired about things I was learning about nutrition. And so my first speaking event was in front of three people in my mother-in-law's kitchen. And I was super nervous, actually. And I don't, you know, the nervous thing is not, you know. But for me at that time, I was like, because I was, I just wanted to be able to make sense, right? To uh, help them to understand uh, what I was uh, experiencing and so that I can help them to, to up-level their lives as well. And so I was very, very invested in helping these people. And it went from three people to five to 10 to 20 to my mother-in-law's kitchen was packed. Little people sitting on laps. It's too hot. It had multiple fans going, AC, it got crazy. And then we were like, we should probably do this somewhere else. And it just kind of evolved from there. And then within the room, people there telling other people about me and what we were doing and then inviting me to speak at their events. And, you know, the, kind of the rest is history. And so I, I shared that with him. But there was something even deeper than that. And this is what I want to point your attention to. Sometimes in our lives, when we're talking about uncovering our purpose, in your life, you can usually look back and find tiny signs of what might be to come, right? We can find tiny signs of what might be to come. When I was uh, just a kid, it was fourth grade. Well, or before this, but fourth grade is the time that has really kind of hit the, the, the tipping point. And this is when I was, my, my teacher was Miss Norman. So shout out to Miss Norman if you happen to be listening. Thank you. But, you know, I was, I was getting good grades. I was doing what I needed to do in class. But I was acting up a little bit. All right. I was acting up. And my teacher made an agreement with me. And I don't remember how this came about. But she made an agreement with me that if I would stop acting up in class, at the end of class, she would give me five, ten minutes at the end of the week to stand up in front of the class and sing. Right. To sing or to, you know, uh, tell some jokes. The, the stage was mine. And so I would bring my friend Andre up there with me uh, at the end of each week. And this was for several weeks this happened. And I would sing. I would entertain. And I had forgotten about that. I forgot about it because that might not be encouraged. But I knew that I would be speaking in front of people. I knew that I would be behind a microphone. And here I am today speaking on these stages in front of thousands of people behind a microphone it's just a different version of that and something that really fills me up more than anything I could have ever imagined. 
So look back on your childhood and those things that brought you joy and happiness. And these can be great guideposts to uncovering your passion and your purpose. But you might be like, one of my passions was I love to cook with my mom or I love to cook with my grandma, but I can't make a living through that. Aha. Aha. Yeah, you can. All right. Just the subject of food. We've had one of the Kevin Curry. We'll put his episode in the show notes. He was here in the studio. He's crushing it. He didn't go to a, a school of whatever to become this what certified cordon bleu chef, whatever. He just started making food and sharing his food with people and sharing his story and how he was making his recipes and his fitness journey and has become uh, something that's transformed his life and a best-selling book and all of this influence and, and, and livelihood. And he was able to like turn down a job at Google. Google reached out to him. He's like, no, I'm, this, is my, this is my passion. And he's turned it into a thriving business. So if you're interested in food, there is a way. Like if you're interested in like, I don't know, um, She-Ra, right? She-Ra. From when I was a kid, there was He-Man. Then She-Ra was the like follow-up. But, you know, it's just it's like the, the female lead versus the, the, the male lead in He-Man and She-Ra. And you're just like, I'm super, I love She-Ra. It's my thing. I got She-Ra t-shirts. You can create a website and sell She-Ra gear, right? There's a new She-Ra cartoon on Netflix. Like, if that is your passion, there are ways for that to manifest. Because I'm pretty sure there are at least a couple of people who were into She-Ra when they were kids that made that cartoon, this new reboot, possible. Right, so we have to start thinking differently about our, our, our experiences and things that we love to do. And even now, is there something that is just calling to you and you're super interested in that you wanna get involved more with, but you talk yourself out of it because you have this story that you know, there's, uh, this is for other people, this is something that I can't do. Maybe it's nutrition, right? Maybe it's nutrition and health and you just are passionate about it. And you would love to be able to make that your career and the thing that you get up and do each day is, is teaching other people about health and nutrition and wellness and supporting your family through that means. And it is absolutely possible, but we tell ourselves these stories that, you know, well, I don't have this, um, the experience, I don't have uh, the connections, I don't have the resources, I don't have this, I don't have that. And we start to talk ourselves out of something that is literally just a decision away. It's, it's within reach. It can be our lives. And we're going to talk about that more in a minute, but there's so many different things that we can do in the health and wellness space. You might see that, you know, this lane is totally taken. There are so many different lanes that you can choose, so many different dimensions of it. And this is one of the things that we've been teaching in how to actually create a sustainable business in the health and wellness space. Because if we're going to help other people to really access their greatest version of themselves and to improve their livelihood, we have to make sure we have our livelihood covered. So we're not like cutting corners and not spending time doing the thing that we're passionate about and the thing that we are here to do, right? Because there are many people who are in the health and wellness space. Maybe they got a certification somewhere and they're you know, a health coach, but they're also working one or two other jobs just to make ends meet. And that's not how this is supposed to be. Folks are not getting the right education, right? The nutrition stuff might be solid, but I think you should get the very best. And also the business side. I wasn't taught in college how to be successful. There was no success 101 or 102 or 202. I would have taken them. Nobody's teaching you how to actually be successful and to create a sustainable business. And it's not even that difficult. It just isn't. There are certain pieces. There's a formula to it. The difficult part is just getting yourself to the place where you say yes to it and you take action and you fully enroll yourself in a bigger vision, and you are aware that it is going to take that time and energy and effort, but you are going to create a life that you truly love, and you're going to make an impact on a lot of people's lives. So, And as you know, I'm a partner and advisor for the Institute of Transformational Nutrition, and we are really leading the field in health coaching, but also in making sure that our students are making big, big waves in this field, right? We've got students who are making you know, six and, and, and seven figure incomes. But also some people, that's not their goal. It's just having their bills covered and matching what their job is currently. 
and having money to, you know, sustain their livelihood, pay their bills and have a good life. But some people are like super killing it because we're giving them access to the very best teachers in the world in business and in nutrition, right? And also the impact, you know, we've got some of the biggest influencers that are out there in the health and wellness space are students from ITN. And you get to learn from a lot of these folks as well. So if you're interested, if this is speaking to your soul, uh, pop over, we've got a quiz to see what you would qualify for. And there's somewhere that you can fit. Trust and believe that. But go to transformationalnutrition.com forward slash model. All right, transformationalnutrition.com forward slash model. We'll also put it for you in the show notes. Right now, we have our $2,000 scholarships still available. All right. We've replenished these funds and we have $2,000 scholarships available and one of them is yours. All right, so pop over there. First process is just taking the quiz and take it from there. But I just want to share that with you. If your passion is health and nutrition, that you can absolutely make that the thing that you do and pour your passion into that and make that your purpose. All right, so we've covered ideas. We've covered passion third component, third and final component here with uncovering your purpose and truly walking fully and completely in your purpose and in your power. The third component is decisions. Decisions really are one of the most powerful forces in all of the universe. If you look back on your life and understand this piece that where you are today is a direct result of the decisions that you've made in your life historically. Every decision that you've made prior to this moment has brought you here to where you are today. If you really start to understand this, you understand the power that decisions carry, right? You are just one idea, one decision away from transforming your entire life. It is that close. It is simply a decision away. Now, the catch is decisions are super easy, but getting ourselves to the place that we make the decisions can be complicated, all right? Now, I've said this before, but decisions are from the Latin day, meaning from, and kaidir, which means to cut. So when you make a real decision about something, you're cutting away the possibility of anything else but the thing you decided on. So when some, somebody truly decides to stop smoking, that's it. They're a non-smoker. It's no more discussion. They've decided it's done. When somebody decides to start a business, when somebody decides, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with you, when you really decide these things, it is done, right? Come what may, this is what I've decided to do. Now, that comes with a lot of weight. It comes with a lot of pressure because of all the other, all the other. What about this? What about that? Decisions can be scary. That's why we don't easily make them. All right? It's not a small thing when you decide. Most people don't decide until things are so bad that they have to choose. Life has forced them to decide. The back is against the wall. They're on the bottom floor, right? They're, they're, they're rock bottom in life, and the only way is up. I have to decide to get up. That's what happened with me. My work is to make sure that pe- you don't have to hit rock bottom. There's a net there first, all right? We're going to hit the net. You're going to get close. You hit the net, you're going to bounce up, all right? Bounce up, trapeze. You're going to grab the trapeze, do some flips, whatever. You're going to be like Robin, all right? Robin, he, he came from the circus. I don't know, Batman Robin, never mind. But this is the goal, is to create a situation where we don't have to hit rock bottom, right? Because the reality is many of us don't get up. Many of us don't get up. You hear the stories of those that did. So you're just one decision away from creating that life that you are here for. And that's the power of decisions. So with that said, how do we get ourselves to that place where we are making the decisions that we need to make? First of all, we got to understand this point that the results in your life are only limited by your expectations. All right, everything in your life is built upon a framework, a mental framework of staying congruent with the person you see yourself to be. Every decision that you make is based on who you, se- who you see yourself to be. There are certain things that you do because of your identity. There are certain things that you don't do because of your identity. You have to work on shifting your identity. And how do you do that? You shift your identity by getting exposure to the things we've talked about. Get yourself around new ideas. Get yourself around people who are thinking differently because you can get stuck in your own way of being, in your own way of thinking. So you need exposure. That is the key. That's the tool. That's why these things are so important. That's why this is a formula. Get yourself around other people to help to shift that identity for you. Only then will you be able to make new decisions. Because so many times we think we're making a decision, but we're really just trying some stuff, all right? We're really just wishing, okay? 
we we think we're Aladdin. We're rubbing a lamp. Like, ah. But the reality is you have not truly decided. Okay. And shout out to Aladdin, you know, re, reboot, Will Smith, shout out. Now, number one is realizing that, that you're limited only by your expectations, your beliefs about who you are and what you're capable of. And you will never, you will never outgrow the beliefs that you carry about what you're capable of. That's, it's the invisible box that we put ourselves in, okay? And so to get past that, again, shifting the identity, shifting your exposure. Now also, another thing with decisions. I want you to stop overthinking, okay? Thinking is important. I want us to think, but sometimes we mull over and we overthink and we think ourselves right out of wonderful experiences and learning lessons. Even if it doesn't go the way that we planned it to, we still are gaining experience and getting ourselves closer to the person in the life that we want to live. So we need to stop overthinking everything and analyze. And I talked about this on episode to kick off this year, five things to quit doing this year in, in 2019. When this is played, so if you're listening to this, uh, you know, next year, years from now, that show is still hyper relevant, all right? But I talked about perfectionism. That can be one of the things that stops us. All right, so overthinking, but for some people, it's not perfectionism. It's also just fear of like all the possibility of what negative can come. And we, we again, we can think ourselves right out of taking action and creating the life that we want. All right, so that's the other part is with decisions, a real decision comes along with action. They're coupled together. You can, truly, if there's not an action taken when you have decided, you haven't really decided. All right, so take action. When you decide that this is happening, I'm about to do this thing, I'm going in this direction, take an action. That is informing your brain, your serious, and all of life, the entire universe is conspiring to assist you in going in that, that direction when you decide. It has your entire life. When you've decided to do something, everything has fallen into place to create the life that you have today. Whether it's the life that you want it consciously or the life that you settled for. Those are the things that you decided upon. All right. And finally, please understand you, you're going to experiment. You're going to get out, try and, and taste and touch, and experience different things. This is super important. We've talked about this throughout this show. But the reality is we need to surround ourselves with it, with, with new environments, new people, new inputs, and also, of course, the positive affirming environments and people who really help to affirm who you are, what you're about, and what you're here for. All right, we all need that. And it's a superpower we can have access to today more than ever. All right, so I hope you got a lot of value out of this. And I want you to uh, go into your day right now with this quote. This is from Napoleon Hill, who wrote the epic powerful manifesto, Think and Grow Rich. He said, quote, you are the master of your destiny. You can influence, direct, and control your environment. You can make your life what you want it to be. All right, thank you so much for tuning into the show today. If you got a lot of value out of this, make sure to share it out with your friends and family on social media. And please tag me. I'm at Sean Model on Instagram. Let me know what you thought about the show. And you can follow me and tag me on Facebook as well. That's at the Model Health Show on Facebook. And I appreciate you so much for tuning in today. And I truly do believe that there is greatness in you. You have gifts, talents, capacities that have never existed before in human history and will never exist after you. You are important and your time is now. The world needs you. So let's step up and step into it. Take care, have an amazing day, and I'll talk with you soon.